If I give you my mic, do you think you could get your teeth to stop chattering because it's really interfering with me getting in touch with my unlimited potential? I don't want your blanket. I don't want anything from you. Okay, look, I don't like bunking with you any more than you like bunking with me, but I think we're missing the point here. I think we're missing the giant ray of sunshine in all of this. At least we're safe from that guy. So what's it like to be a hero? You, I'm talking to you. What's that like? You were right about him from the get-go, huh? I read about it in my paper. I used to own a newspaper. First time you laid eyes on him, he was trying to murder your mother. Well, that's nice, Manning. It's true, right? Right? It's true. And then you saw him kill his brother in law enforcement, Officer Charleston. Carlson? Didn't hesitate, right? Just pulled out this weird weapon, and innocent father of three just kind of sliced him up into tiny Enough! little pieces of cop. Enough for who? For you? You don't need to make the kid relive it. Well, he wouldn't have had to live it at all if you hadn't gone on a killing spree. Don't worry, kid. I got you back. Cow. Cow. I saw him kill someone, too. And she was a mother. Just like yours. It's really too bad Lucy Coe's aim was off. I mean, when I first met Lucy, I thought she was nuts. And it turns out she was, utterly. But she was right about that guy. D did you just say Lucy Coe? Yeah. She tried to stake our friend here right through the heart. And if she had succeeded, she would have saved a lot of lives, including Heather. Don't get me wrong. The world is a better place without Heather, but she was a person. I mean, she was a frail, middle-aged person who didn't know herself very well, but she frail. was a person. Frail? I mean, I thought she was pretty sturdy. How do you know Heather? She tricked me into giving Molly's nephew to her. It's my fault she got her hands on that baby. D don't feel bad. It, she can be very persuasive. She's got, like, Jedi mind skills. Unbelievable you try to twist this to your advantage. Heather Weber was a saint. A saint who kidnapped a baby? Oh, yeah, she was stark raving mad, but she was a, a human being who liked 50 hues of blue and BLTs and babies and a whole bunch of other things that probably started with the letter B. And here we are, locked up next to her killer, like we're the same brand of bad. Let me tell you something. I was trying to save that baby. He was trying to steal a baby. So, so, just saying, I think we can help each other. I don't know who this guy is or what he's done. Nothing. Well, nothing likely. But I know you. Okay, you killed my mother. Oh, snap. Then, then came back to me, swore you didn't. Took me out of my cell with some lame excuse about wanting to go back to the scene to walk through what happened. All so you could kill that other cop? I mean, why? Why? Why indeed? Why did you have to do it in front of me? What well, was it, a message that, that I was next or what? I, I know, yo, right? When I saw him kill Heather, I was like, what? What is this guy capable of? I mean, am I next? Is he gonna kill me next? You know, he might have if the cops hadn't shown up. Look, I'm, I'm not the only witness anymore. Look, you can't intimidate me anymore, Go okay? Go on, son. So what's it gonna be? Are you finally gonna change your story? No. It wasn't me. I didn't do any of those oh, things. Then who did? His name is Caleb. Okay. I expected better from you, McBain. You're gonna blame vampires for murders you committed? I never said Caleb was a vampire. Just a guy that looks like me. Even the hair? It doesn't strike you as slightly impossible that while you supposedly saw me strangle Heather, that my presence is accounted for right here? Yeah, by fellow officers. He's <laughs> got a point. Yeah, I knew I liked you. I know that sentence is weird because we're in prison. He doesn't have a point. None of these guys are covering for me. Of course they are, McBain. Come on. I watch television. It's called the Blue Wall of Silence. After I've been accused of killing a cop? Yeah, I don't think so. And you, last time I saw you, you were in that cell. It was the day after your mother had been murdered, and we talked about Caleb, and we talked about the ring. You remember that? You described it for me. And then I went to go find out more about it. Yeah, from another guy who wound up dead. I was at the university talking with the professor when the guy that looks like me... He looks exactly like you? Caleb took you out of the cell. It wasn't me, which means that guy's still out there, and other people are still in danger. All right. You can believe what you want. Until this guy's out there. 
pretending to be a cop. He's got everyone believing he's me. And he's a murderer. You're gonna try and skirt prison time by saying that there's two of you running around and that one of you is a vampire. I'm not trying to skirt anything. Okay, I've done some crazy, I've done horrible things. And I've come up with all kinds of excuses for the atrocious things that I've done, but even I haven't sliced and diced my way through an entire community. Great. It's not me. <laughs> I don't know, McBain. If it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck. Man, you and I don't, you know, you and I don't like each other. That's no secret. No, it's not. But you know me. Unfortunately. It hasn't always been bad, has it? No, it's been mostly bad. Yeah, you're right. Except for the time you came back to Landview. And you didn't know anybody. And those guys trying to kill you, and besides drinking all of my beer, well, I think I had your back, didn't I? Yeah. You had one moment of humanity. That doesn't excuse murder. So I'm the serial killer. Why expose myself now? Hmm? I'd never seen Alison Barrington before the day she walked into the police station. Bud Carlson was a co-worker. Professor Moser, a stranger. And the Weber just nuts. What did I have to gain by killing her and stealing Sam's baby? Of course, it's possible. You don't honestly believe I killed four people in front of witnesses, one of whom is you. I don't know. You're kind of a moody guy. Maybe that's because you're just not in touch with your dark side. Like you're in touch with yours? You think my, uh, my story's unbelievable? This guy Manny, he's got a, a twin brother named Victor who pretended to be Manning for like, I don't know, eight or nine years. Not just that, he stole my entire life. Made Manning mad, real mad. So mad he killed old Vic. Your own brother? If you'd met him, you would've killed him too. Yeah, you see, the point is, you've been where I've been. Uh, you know what it's like trying to convince people of something that sounds crazy, but you know it's true. Manny, you listening? Yeah, I'm not deaf. You sure? I'll make you a deal. I'll believe your story if you believe mine. That's my offer, take it or leave it. You want me to believe your story? Yeah, I know, it's a stretch. Yeah, right? I already do. You do? Yeah. I have no doubt you saw a man who looks like me on the pier. And I have no doubt you saw this man strangle Heather and take off with Danny. But it wasn't you. No, if it wasn't me. So what do you say we start, start at the beginning and you tell me what happened between Caleb and Heather? Yeah, you. Uh, well, he threw crazy Heather into the harbor and then he tried to leave. But you stopped him. Well, I wasn't gonna let him leave with that baby. What went down before that? What happened between Caleb and Heather? I, I'm, I... Look, I was focused on escaping and then... This whole thing, I mean, you're you, but it's not you. It was all very bizarre. All right. Let's talk about Caleb and the baby. You know, why, why do you want the baby? It must have been pretty significant if he was willing to kill for it. Yeah, and he would have he killed me too if the cops hadn't come. I'll make sure it's noted in the report, all right? Did, did he say anything to Heather before he killed her? <sighs> he, was, he was upset at her for taking something that did not belong to her. We're talking about Danny. I don't know. I mean, he, he said that, that, that now it would be easy for him to get the mother to come with him. I don't know. Whole, whole thing's totally weird, but what the hell, right? No, it's not at all. It all fits. It fits. Yeah. Rafe, did your mom ever mention a woman named Livy Locke? Uh, yeah, I think she said they used to be friends or something. Okay, come on. Who's Livy Locke? She's a woman who apparently resembles Sam as much as I resemble this Caleb. Right, okay, so now there's two double people running around Port Charles. When your mom was at the PCPD, she kept calling Sam Livy. And Lucy said that Caleb was obsessed with this Livy. It was the reason for everything he did. Right. And nothing impresses a chick more than killing four people. So if Caleb is after Livy, well, then Danny's just the bait. Caleb wants Sam. I know I must. Caleb is after Sam, and nobody knows it. I mean, there's got to be something we can do, doesn't right? make Hey, sense. Gord, you got to let me Why out of here. Caleb go after Sam? Wouldn't you hey, go after Livy? Gord! Get that little doppelganger Gord. vampire baby You said together? it yourself. He's going to use the baby to make Sam go with him. Anna. Anna, I'm glad you're here. you, 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 you got to listen to me. What's going on? We just wanted to make sure that you're where you're supposed to be. Where could we go? There are bars. 
but it's cool. We've been talking about the finer points of criminal intent and the true nature of identity. Yeah, we've been here this whole time. Something happened. Sam and Danny are gone. 